Hi, this is Chris Legaspi. This video is a sneak preview of my brand new painting course, Pencil to Palette. This course is a fully guided journey from drawing to full color painting. So if you want to learn more about this course and you want to get started painting, visit www.penciltopalette.art and there you can get instant access and start your painting journey. Okay, first thing I want to do is uh, I want to load uh, paints on my canvas and start making our first marks. All right here I'm using a uh, glass easel. It's my favorite. We saw uh, the wood, uh, excuse me, palette, glass palette. It's my favorite to use. Um, we could also uh, use the, um, the, the wood palette that came with the uh, French easel, or if you prefer wood, the fancy, you know, you've seen those photos of the fancy artists with their wood palette and the, and the thing and they do this, that, that will be you. So you're, and you're, com you're welcome to do that as well, but I, I like glass. So we're just going to load our paint and, um, what I like to do is load, uh, from dark to light. I like brightest to darkest. So left to right for me. So my white almost always goes on the far upper left or far left, whatever, wherever. And, uh, give yourself nice long string of white there. You can use your palette knife here to make it look fancy like that. That's just to organize. So, um, the cleaner and more organized you are, the happier you, your life will be. Tr tr trust me. So, um, for this painting, I normally would put, I, I normally don't use black actually, but, um, I would put the darkest dark at the very end, but for this particular example, I'm just going to put it next to it since we're uh, only doing black and white here. So this would be your second two. Just try to be neat as you can. Be neater than me. Obviously, your palette's going to be ugly, but um, a neat neatness is the habit that we want to build. Neatness. Um, organization. Um, and, uh, off camera, you can't see it, but I do have my table. Remember every, every artist needs a fancy table. So that's like a, a tabaret. Um, so I've got all my stuff on my side table here. And let's begin with our first marks. So remember we have a couple different shapes and a couple different hairs, uh, bristle and sable. Uh, I do most of the work with bristle and I do most of the drawing with the rounds. Remember, rounds are for drawing. That's what we're going to do now. And I'm going to just touch a bit of oil here. So I'm going to grab my black. Oh, that's a nice black. This is uh, the Holbein black. And oh, also, I forgot to mention, um, how we make a mark depends on how we hold the brush. And painters hold their brushes in a specific way. We hold our brush at the end with your pinky up like a fancy person. But no, you don't need the pinky up. But at the end, at the end. And we make marks not like this with our face stuck to the canvas. We make the mark like this, like this from a distance. I don't know if you can see me here from a distance. And you want to um, a good analogy, and I got this from David LaFell, a uh, very accomplished and excellent American painter. You want to make a mark like a rifleman. So imagine a rifleman shooting a gun uh, with a long rifle. You, you take your time. You take your time, you look, you point, and you aim before you fire. That's what we do with our brush. So you don't, you don't just go uh, like that. You I mean you can, but the proper stroke, the fancy stroke, the strokes that all the greats that we admire, the sergeants, the Rembrandts, the Bougaros, come like a rifleman. Boom. You see like this, 
shoot, aim, fire, and mark. So you'll see it here. You'll see me make proper marks, hopefully. And of course, we can still do scrubbing. We need to do scrubbing. But that is the beginning of painting technique, is how you hold the brush, how you hold the mark. And it's going to be very difficult because most likely you're watching this. You've probably been drawing like this, right? Doing the thing, holding the pencil like the thing, like the pencil. I call it the writing grip, the normal grip. When you come here, it's going to be difficult if you've never done it. And a brush is much heavier than a pencil. So there's more weight that your muscles will have to get used to, but it's worth it. And that's why we draw like this. Remember those of you who may be taking my drawing classes or other drawing classes, we always talk about this grip, the undercup grip, where you hold your pencil like this with the thumb on top. Why do we train this grip? It's so we can get ready for this bad boy. Undercup grip with the pencil prepares you to paint, to hold the brush properly. All right, so now I got my fancy grip. I got my fancy technique. Let's give it a try. Let's make our first mark. I got a round brush here. I got a little bit of walnut oil in my thing, and let's see. Voila. So that's pretty much the mark we make. Now you want to pay attention to your mark too. Notice here, notice here, um, you see a lot of canvas. That means the paint is too, there's not enough paint on my thing. So part of good painting is loading your brush correctly. So now if you uh, zoom in on my canvas, uh, my palette here, you can see I got enough paint on the brush now. It's pretty nice. I go back to the canvas. Let's see what that looks like. See, it's much better. Good coverage in the beginning and less in the end. That's fine. So we need to fill these gaps. That's where um, your walnut oil will come in. It'll give you a bit more body. It'll help to give you a bit more coverage at the end of the mark. And typically you won't make marks that long anyway. So if I put, I don't want to put too much oil or solvent or whatever, or Gamsol. That's much nicer. And typically you don't make marks that long anyway, especially when you're using a flat. And um, notice my tip here, it's not too, um, notice my tip is not too goopy. And that's good. And then you want to keep your thing. You don't want to, you want a big goop on there, a big, big blob of paint. So you want to be very careful. If it gets too goopy, that's, then you need to wipe it. And you probably, uh, if you're mixing a big gob of big amount of paint, you may want to use a knife. All right, let's keep, uh, let's make a few more marks. We're going to use a flat brush this time. So this is the bulk of the, the bulk of the work that, that we'll probably be doing. So it would be flats. So we're going to make some marks now. So I got a brand new bristle flat here. So this is going to pick up a lot more paint than that little round. So I want to carefully load it. If you can look at it, it's quite clean. You can see there's a lot of paint on there, but we won't really know until we make a mark. So let's make our mark. Oh yeah, that is nice. See, it's nice and opaque in one end and then it gets a little bit thinner. So we could add medium. Let's try that. Let's try to add a little bit more paint and then add a touch of medium. Let's see how far, or a touch of walnut oil in this case. And then, oops, let's see uh, how far we can get with this mark here. So it's starting to get a little goopy. Oh, that's cool. See, I'm putting some pressure on it. So it got thin at one end and thicker in the middle. Oh, that's a pretty mark. This is so exciting. It's exciting when it works. 
And then let's do vertical, like a touch. And notice the tail at one end, you may want the tail or the, the feathery part at the other end. So you just make mark the opposite way. And notice just like, just like we do with the pencil, you kind of press down a little bit and then lift up, lift up, lift up to get that nice tail at the end. It's basically the thick or thin of the brush. And that's pretty much it. Um, The most important thing is that you understand that the mark needs to have a pretty shape. So the shape you need to control is typically with your brush. And then the, um, the opacity. We don't want like this all thin, like this first mark, second mark here. We want closer to this, nice and thick and opaque so we understand what we're doing. And um, just for fun, let's try a sable, just so you can see the difference that a sable makes. Let me find a sable here. So here I have a sable, and this is a synthetic sable. So you can see on the canvas. Let's see what this mark looks like. See, look at that. I don't know if you can see it, but see how the edge is much tighter and there's less that's, that's as far as I can go. If I try to do a tail or a soft feathery end, I won't be able to get that far. So you see how the tail is also softer. It has less of that grit. So this is why sables are cool and this is why we, uh, we use them, or I, I like to use them. I recommend using them so you can get a softer mark. And that's what they're for. That's why, that's, that's really what they're for. That's the end of this video. I want to thank you for watching. If you like this video and you want to watch the full lesson and learn more about the course, visit www.penciltopalette.art and there you can get instant access to the course and even start a free trial. So you can start your painting journey right away and make the transition from drawing to the brilliance of full color painting and become the painter you've always wanted to be. Visit www.penciltopalette.art to learn more.